Hello and welcome to a very special episode of a live video av talk. I am Ian Pechnik here as always with Jason Rabinowitz and hello we have Ned Russell from Skift with us today and you know when we come to you live in video form uh, some airline has melted down operationally. Um, we don't do these often I think we did this last it was it like 2017 when uh, the entirety of JFK airport had a meltdown, wasn't just an airline, but in this case, it's Southwest Airlines uh, completely has fallen over. Uh, welcome, Ned. How are you? Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. I wish it was for more better circumstances, though. Yeah, it, it's so much of a meltdown that, that Ned's not actually supposed to be working this week, and Jason's not actually supposed to be working this week. We weren't supposed to have any episode of Ab Talk, we were going to do a clip show, um, but uh, we we got together and decided that it was time to time to take a look at uh, what's going on with Southwest uh, and what they're doing to to kind of reset things. So if, if we go if we go to the live map, uh, these are all of the active Southwest flights at the moment, and um, it's not as many as it's supposed to be. Uh, at at the moment, we've got. Um, let's see, 217 active Southwest flights, which is actually much more now in the last hour or two hours than we've seen, um, in, in a very long time. Um, so, so as of, um, about a half hour ago, here are the oh. daily cancellations <laughs> for, uh, for Southwest. So what happened was in, in most parts of the United States, beginning on the 22nd of December here, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move this little, uh, little bar so we can, we can see the, yeah. the whole chart. So on the 22nd of December, weather moved in across the U S there was, um, poor weather. We need some from... emphasis on that. It wasn't just a localized thing over one of Southwest Hub. It was quite literally everywhere, except like yeah, Southern from, California and Southern Florida. Everywhere else was just a nightmare. Yeah, from from Seattle to to New York and, and nearly everywhere in between, uh, there was precipitation. There was wind. There was snow. Uh, here in Chicago, we had temperatures far below zero. Um, very, very cold. Everything started to freeze. Uh, winds gusting at 50 to 60 knots, all, all sorts of, you know, terrible stuff moving through. And, and that was affecting a, a huge portion of the country. And so like all airlines, Southwest canceled hundreds of flights that day. They, they were not out of the ordinary 688 flights on the 22nd of December, well within range for all major U.S. airlines um, that that were dealing with the weather, and and the twenty third, twenty fourth, similar uh, similar things. Christmas, fewer flights operating. Uh, normally, one of the quietest travel days of the year as far as getting through an airport. Uh, you know, you always recommend. I, I know Jason and I have talked about this before uh, on a regular episode of the podcast. If you're going to fly over Christmas, fly on Christmas. And uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, exactly. if you're flying on Thanksgiving, fly on Thanksgiving Day. They're generally, uh, everyone is where they want to be already. And usually you can sneak in earlier in the morning and it's fine. But exactly. Uh, not this year. Not <laughs> this year. And and no. so that was that was a massive, massive headache. Um, and then Monday hit and everyone said, what's going on with Southwest? Because other airlines did a much better job of recovering. They were able to reset their schedules. They were able to get their operations back in line. And I think, Jason, yesterday you noted that if you exclude, um, if you exclude Buffalo, which was under, I think, 12,000. We may snow. never see the people of Buffalo, New York again. They, they may yeah. be gone. Uh, so if you exclude Buffalo, American didn't cancel any flights yesterday or, or barely. Yeah, American, like hats off, kudos to the operations team at American. They were dealing with the same weather that everyone else was. Yes, they do have a hub in Miami. So they, they were spared the worst for in that region. But uh, American managed to pull off a nearly flawless 
uh, day after Christmas, which is is great. They still had, uh, I think, like a third of their flights were delayed, but the actual important bit of getting them out um, nearly flawless victory, which is pretty great. Not every U.S. airline other than uh, Southwest and American performed as well. Delta uh, had quite a significant number of cancellations. United didn't. Uh, didn't wasn't as bad. JetBlue had a number as well, um, but then there's Southwest, where if you put Southwest along with all the other U.S. carriers, they 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 just go off the top of the chart. The scale gets blown out. Yeah. So so for I guess for uh, comparative, you know, compare uh, a scale of the issue. Southwest operates about four thousand flights per day. So so over the Christmas holiday, they they canceled. Uh, between uh, ab about a third of their flights. And then it got worse from there, um, where we're looking at two thirds. And, and the number for Friday, the, the numbers in yellow for today, tomorrow, and, and or on Thursday, I'm sorry, the, uh, through the 29th, those are all projected because they're changing, not minute by minute anymore. Southwest seems to have, have slowed down the rate of cancellation, but they are changing very quickly. And, and the cancellations for the 29th continue to grow as well because Southwest has said they expect to operate about only a third of their scheduled flights for the next few days to allow the system to reset. Yeah, and it's and, crazy because this is this is quickly yeah. moving into New Year's travel. I mean, we're going to get out of Christmas into New Year's. It's it's just, yeah, it's, it's watching it spike and, and continuing. It's... Yeah, and, and you feel for on anyone it, else Ian, on the road. Yeah, you touched on it, Ian, that yesterday, um, optimistic start of the day for Southwest, where only about a third of can uh, flights were canceled. And then the, as the day went on, their operation unraveled more and more and more. And the number of cancellations went up every time you refreshed anything you were looking at, whether it's Flight Radar 24 or wherever else you get uh, your supply of delayed and canceled information from. Every time it got worse and worse and worse throughout the end of the day, where it was up to 70 yeah. something percent of flights canceled, a really, really horrible approach for any any business, let alone an airline, to string people along through the entire day only to cancel at the end of the day. Um, whereas today it was much and going forward is much more of a, a forward looking approach where they just axed the day the, the night before. 70% of the flights out of the gate, not stringing anyone along. The only people who should be going to the airport are people who have what they think right now, at least, are confirmed operating flights. Um, so you, yesterday, not, not just an operational mess, but a communications mess. And that's something we'll, we'll talk about. No, oh, yeah. Go on. Yeah. No. So the, <laughs> go, go ahead, Ned. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I mean, even the way South, we, we can talk about this more further, but communications, I hear numerous stories about people only finding out when they went to check in or looked at their phone that their flight was canceled. There weren't, you know, the proactive text messages or emails or anything, but we, we can talk about that more. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in, in just a little bit. Uh, but, but first I want to continue kind of the discussion of, of what's happened. So, so Southwest uh, or, or why it's happened really. So Southwest is an airline that operates, they say they don't have hubs. They have yeah, sure, cities sure. They in which have they hubs. operate a predominant number of their flights. Um, so, so if you look at where those flight cancellations are taking place, you're looking at places like Denver, Las Vegas, Chicago Midway, Baltimore, Washington, and and then throughout the system, uh, you know, to to a lesser extent. What happened was over the holiday period, because of the weather's impact, pilots, aircraft, flight attendants got out of position from where they're supposed to be. And they couldn't operate certain legs, they could operate others. So so they got out of out of position of where they needed to be to operate the rest of the schedule. And, and in, yeah, it, it, I wanted to say it's it this is worse for Southwest because they operate a point to point network. So a crew could start say in Baltimore and then fly to Nashville, Houston, Denver, Vegas, and end the day in Los Angeles. So they're crossing the entire country. So if that plane gets that flight gets canceled on one leg, say Baltimore, Nashville, it suddenly you've bumped, you've, you've hit the schedule across the country. And then if you lose track of your crew, they could be in Nashville. Maybe they deadheaded on to Houston, but you don't know where they are. And it, it just, it spiral, it cascades out of control at Southwest. It, it can, if it's not controlled. Whereas you see hub and spoke airlines, typically crews or at least planes are flying back and forth from a hub. So if Denver's hit, Denver, everything gets canceled, but 
the airline's fine in Houston and Chicago, and I'm talking about United here, but it's it's unique to Southwest the way they schedule their crews and their planes. Yeah, that, that's certainly a big part of why crews were so kind of out of place from, from the start uh, at, at the beginning of the next day and then having that cascade on. The other part of it, as Ned mentioned, is knowing where your crews are. And based on comments that Southwest CEO uh, Bob Jordan made last night on, on the 26th, um, it, they didn't know where their crews were. They were Southwest manually updates its scheduling software to to understand where their crews are. There's a team of people that if there are irregular operations, they have to manually adjust where the crews are. So so if there's weather, if the if an aircraft is supposed to fly from San Francisco to Albuquerque to Kansas City to Chicago and the flight from Albuquerque to Kansas City can't operate. Southwest has to manually go back and say, oh, that flight didn't go. The crew is still, the crew and the aircraft are still in Albuquerque. Yeah. And, and go ahead, Jason. That, that, that's a big part of the problem that, that the biggest problem we saw, at least anecdotally, um, was that Southwest just wasn't able to keep track of where its people were, when they were, what they were supposed to be doing. And anecdotally, we saw a lot of reports of the plane is here, it's full of fuel, the bags are on, the passengers are on, we have two pilots, but we only have two flight attendants. We don't know where that third flight attendant is. They are somewhere and no one knows where. And that, it seems like, is what really caused this issue is that Southwest just did not know where its people were. And we can get into why that might have happened and how that happens and why it's important. But it, more than anything else, this was a people problem caused by, um, how do we put this nicely? Re really, really bad, outdated infrastructure, I guess. Yes. Yep. And the thing I, that I, 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 I mean, several... I don't, nicely or not, that's how you put it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the other, the, the other piece of that that I've heard from several sources is that they also, their system didn't know who was legal or not because the FAA mandates a certain amount of rest time after someone's been on duty for a certain period. And on duty can be sitting at the airport waiting to fly, but not actually flying. And we did and, see that. We, we saw a number yeah. of flight attendants on Twitter post screenshots of their phone calling to crew operations being on hold for eight hours. That's their entire duty day. So some right. of the crew were, were literally sitting at an airport ready to go but could not get through to headquarters to tell them where to go. That's, right. that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah. The, one of the, one of the biggest problems and, and Southwest CEO mentioned this last night is that they don't have the technology to, uh, to automatically reschedule their crew. That's um, one way to put it. I would frame it as, in a different way that they have not paid the dollars necessary to invest in a system that probably every other airline in the country has to automate this um, almost seems like he's deflecting the, the blame on that. There's no one else to blame other than the leadership of Southwest for not investing, rather uh, giving money back to shareholders again, which ironically they just said they were going to start doing. Was that now, like last week or the week before? Oh, yeah, it was two weeks ago. But it, it's even even worse because Bob Jordan was the chief operating officer of Southwest Airlines before he became there the CEO. There it is. Yes. That, that ties it all together. So not only the, the, is, is he now the chief executive officer, but the guy doing the job of actually running the airline before him, that, that was him. So there's no one to blame but himself. Yeah, well, it, it, there's there's also that, but this goes back to th this isn't new to Southwest. the The lack of investment in IT infrastructure is not is is an old story for Southwest. They couldn't operate international flights for so long because their computer systems couldn't handle going outside the U.S. And that was an acceptable, I guess, not not a risk, but an acceptable loss to them. And that's part of the reason they bought AirTran was for the international route network and the capability to simply run an international flight. I mean, this was always more. And I, I, I don't know if this was ever actually true, but the, the story was back in the day that Southwest never ran any red-eye overnight flights simply because their computer system didn't know how to do that. I don't know if that story is actually true, but I'd like to believe that it was or probably still is true at this point. 
speaking of technology, what gets me is the amount of money Southwest has spent to expand their their reservation systems to to get into the GDSs to basically capture more money and more travelers. Yet clearly they have not done the back of the housework investing in their crew scheduling systems and all these systems that make them a, a reliable airline. And it's it's really shocking with this meltdown. I mean, they've put hundreds of millions of dollars into getting into, to, yeah, to selling more tickets to corporates and, and everything. And it's just, you know, and, why isn't it done? Yeah. I've seen some people say, well, Southwest's model is run at the red line, basically run as many flights as, as physically possible with their aircraft and people and churn as much profit as they can out of their, their infrastructure. But I, I would say that's really no different than any other airline like JetBlue or Spirit or Allegiant. They all run their fleets to the red line, as many flights as possible. I mean, even, even the regional characters, those carriers, they'll squeeze seven flights out of a CRJ in a single day if they can. Um, but they need to have the infrastructure behind the scenes to actually power that. And right now, Southwest couldn't be any farther from it right now. Right. I want to I want to go back to the to the live map real quick. What I've done is pulled up the um, the the flights that are uh, repositioning flights for for the most part, except uh, except this one right here. Um, the rest of the flights displayed are repositioning flights, uh, aircraft how'd, moving how'd around Southwest that? system. How'd you get that uh, to display? Southwest uses the eight thousand block for repositioning flights. Interesting. Um, so, so these are flights that are moving through the system with pilots, perhaps flight attendants, uh, but not revenue passengers to, to help reset the system, looking at how much, um, how many flights Southwest has canceled for, um, for the, the next few days. They're trying to get the aircraft back to where they can reset and restart. They also said that they're going to operate fewer flights over the New York holiday than they had intended originally. Um, Southwest zeroed out their inventory uh, so Oof. that you could not book any flights until the 1st of January. Uh, so if you went to southwest.com, opened up their app, or, or as Ned mentioned, now you can go into the GDS and try and buy one. All of the inventory was zeroed out ahead of um, ahead of January 1st. So the ability to purchase a Southwest ticket is gone until next week so that they can continue to reset the operation because they had people standing in line for, for five, six, seven hours yesterday. And then there was nobody there to, to rebook them. There was nothing there to rebook because they were canceling flights on an ad hoc basis. So now they've, they've kind of as Ned and Jason mentioned earlier, they've kind of taken that away. So at least people who are at the airport have a chance of leaving today um, and, and they can or leaving in get, three days. get to where they're going. <laughs> or, or, well, hopefully they're not at the airport if they're leaving in three days. Um, okay. So, so hopefully that's, um, that's, that's the thing. Now the question becomes is how do you recover from this and, and how do you, how do you make people whole? So one of the questions that, that, has come up um, that we've talked about on the podcast a million times when you, when you book a flight is being able to have a backup plan for uh, what happens if something goes wrong. Now, normally, if you book a Southwest flight and one flight cancels, for the most part, it's fairly simple to get on another Southwest flight. Even though you can't rebook onto another airline, even though you don't have a lot of options outside the Southwest network, Usually when something goes wrong with a single Southwest flight or a few Southwest flights because of weather or something like that, you can rebook fairly simply. But because Southwest doesn't have agreements with other airlines to allow people to, to rebook onto other airlines, that when the whole network melts down causes, causes a very, very fast and and frightening cascade of cancellations yeah. and and ruined trips that's something i wanted to mention as well so if you book delta united american um if your flight gets canceled and there are truly no options on that particular airline that the rest of that day someone at the airport will almost certainly be able to get you on one of the other airline flights that day american will do it with JetBlue. JetBlue will do it with uh, American, Delta might even put you on Alaska if you ask really nicely. Um, even earlier this year, we saw Spirit Airlines, uh, a, a notorious ultra-low-cost carrier, 
actually proactively rebooking passengers on other airlines, even though they don't have any interline or any reciprocity agreements with any other airline. They whipped out the corporate credit card and they were booking flights on other airlines to get people. Southwest, yeah. we haven't seen them do anything of the nature. And that might be because there simply aren't any other available seats out there. It's a really bad time, maybe the worst time of the year to have to do something like this. But surely there are seats out there at exorbitant costs for Southwest to book passengers on, but they they just haven't done that. Or if they have, um, I haven't seen any evidence of that. I haven't even seen any uh, standby lists from Southwest for their own flights. I would have expected by now to see uh, standby flights that are actually, or standby lists on flights that are operating be like a thousand names long, but we haven't haven't seen that. On dot like, matrix oh. printouts, wouldn't they be, Jason? <laughs> I mean, when when I was there for the last AirTran flight, it was on Southwest system, and literally there was a list this long of a thousand over a thousand names on the standby list for that last AirTran flight. So I assume it's the same, but I, I haven't seen it. But um, not to get off course here, I'm, I'm disappointed that Southwest hasn't rebooked passengers on on any other airline, or if they have, it hasn't been in any significant numbers at this point. So well, my question I, I think really. This is Go ahead, Ned. No, no, I just want to, in terms of rebooking, you mentioned Spirit Airlines agents just getting out a credit card and booking them on other airlines. You know, I'm, I really uh, look to Southwest leadership and wonder, I mean, if they aren't giving their staff the authority to just go ahead and do that, that's really a comment on Southwest leadership. Because you know there's something in, in Southwest bureaucracy that's limiting agents from just going ahead and buying that ticket on another airline. Well, otherwise, they probably would be. So that's it, it just doesn't reflect well at all on what Southwest decision making is right now. And and, and this this leads into to the kind of the big picture topic that I wanted to to cover as far as communication goes. I mean, we we are not flying on on Spirit or Spirit on Southwest this week. Um, but usually the airline is out very quickly with airlines are very quickly when something like this happens with clear communication look here's the problem here's what we're doing to fix the problem if you've been impacted here's what you should do don't go to the airport go to the airport call this number um you know what do you do are are if you want to cancel your flight, go ahead. Um, if you don't want to cancel your flight, but you want to fly later, great. That helps us out. I didn't see any of that from Southwest. And and at this point, I, I think it was um, this morning on CNN, Southwest still had a, a spokesperson on who who wasn't the CEO of the company. And and I think it was Ross Feinstein who, uh, who has been a, a spokesperson for an airline before and been in a, a similar situation, said at this point, it should not be this person in from from the comm shop who who's standing in front of the camera on live television. It should be the CEO saying, we messed up. Here's how we're fixing it. And does anyone know where the CEO of no, Southwest I mean, Airlines is even, at the moment? Even through their social channels, I, I pulled up Southwest Twitter account and their last tweets are six days ago about getting in the holiday spirit, um, which they did not do well. And then one from uh, yesterday just saying we continue to experience high call volumes and social inquiry. Um, there isn't even an explainer posted of like what happened, what to expect. Here's what to do if your flight is canceled, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But there's just there's no no responsibility, no communication. It's like they didn't even have a plan. They must have a plan in place. Legally, every carrier that operates to the U.S. has to have a contingency plan. And then all, if all goes worst, here's what we do. And I'm sure they're putting yeah. it into place, but they must have skipped the chapter on uh, actually communicating <laughs> any of that. I don't know. Well, so this is what gets me. Bob Jordan, uh, their CEO, I mean, he has an Instagram and a LinkedIn page that's very public. His last post on Instagram is about their celebrating 45 minutes, 45 years in service at the New York Stock Exchange from their investor day. I mean, at this point, like he should be on the major networks and posting you. I'm very sorry. It's, it's and, and really you know, shocking. We mocked British Airways as CEO from one of the many IT meltdowns years ago for getting on camera, wearing a high visibility vest and taking maybe not responsibility, but at least saying, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what we're doing to fix it. Yes, we relentlessly mocked him for wearing a high visibility vest inside <laughs> an office in front of a camera. But at least an attempt was made to get in front of camera and get the word out there as opposed to this, which is just 
there's nothing nothing is happening it's i don't get it so much brand loyalty and southwest is, is tossed out the window absolutely southwest is traditionally good at this like they are remember when there was that unfortunate incident that the 737 window blew out out at leaving philadelphia depressurized the plane uh one passenger like southwest com uh, you know they moved quickly they were on top of that they were really responsive Maybe that's one flight, not the whole system, but it's just it's it's shocking that that we're not having more of a high level response to this. More, yeah, get out and communicate with customers. So uh, speaking of high level response, uh, the, the the head of the Department of Transportation, uh, I'm, I'm just yes, mayor. this is where we I, were I, going. I, next. I like calling him Mayor Pete. Um, <laughs> he has been up airlines' asses this year about operational reliability, getting the job done, getting people where they need to be. In a toothless way, it's it's been a lot of words, no real action. Um, he made a comp. He posted a tweet yesterday saying, "I will have comment about this tomorrow." And it is now two twenty-one and a half Eastern time, and so far we haven't seen anything. Um, I am interested to see what, if anything, the DOT is going to do. Whether they're going to do an investigation and say, "Yeah, here's what happened," but we don't have the authority to actually do anything or find them. I guess like. That yeah, I mean, unless they had people stuck on planes for three plus hours, it's, which I'm sure they what... did. There, I'm sure yeah. there will be yeah. DOT ground handling busts happening all over. For those who may not be in the know on this, um, domestically at least, airlines have four hours to get you off the plane. Either if they board you and you're not able to take off or you're not able to get to a gate after landing, you have four hours on a domestic flight, three hours on an international flight where they have to get you off. I'm sure they're gonna be racking up a, a historic number of violations in that regard. Um, but that's that doesn't go to the passengers, that goes to the government, so who cares? Right, right, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I, I, I think th there's two things here. One is that it, the DOT yesterday posted Southwest's kind of emergency procedures uh, guidelines or, or their plan. Um, so they've got one. The DOT posted it on Twitter and said, here's their plan. Southwest has said nothing. They didn't even respond to the DOT and said, thank you for your concern. We're working on it. Like, I nothing, nothing has been said from them. The CEO has not, you know, come out. The only information we have from the CEO from last night is, is a conference call that was held internally because they were discussing it with, with multiple, um, multiple executives from Southwest. And that transcript was, was made available. Journalists got a hold of the transcript. As they, and as that's how we know as much as we know about South, they haven't said anything. They haven't said sorry. They haven't said we're working on it. If I was a Southwest passenger, I, I mean, I, I have family that flies Southwest, and that's all they fly, because those two free check bags are the best thing that has ever happened to them. Even when I have tried to explain to them that if you buy a cheaper ticket and then just buy the bag, it could be cheaper. You have to look at both, but no. Um, yeah. So it, it, Ian, it, I have this, to say, Southwest the loyalty is gone. Oh, yeah, but I have to say, Who, they, they did they did apologize in a in a very generic uh, statement put out on their website. This wasn't the CEO or anything, but yes, mm. <laughs> their, their well, spokesperson was uh, was apologizing at their work. But it's not a senior leader. It's not the the leadership of Southwest taking accountability. It's a very generic press statement. With, yeah. So maybe we should back up a little bit and talk about how Southwest got here. And to, I'm looking sure. at the comments. Matt Delaney said, why are people upset? Worst blizzard of all time. Better to be safe. And let's analyze a little bit about why people should be upset. Right. How that's not an excuse. So right. what happened? We, we alluded to this at the beginning of the, of the this isn't the podcast, a live stream or whatever. Um, well, it's a live episode. It's a live, live episode, episode of the, of the podcast. podcast. That there was a an historic <laughs> blizzard across uh, North America, really. This included yes. Canada as well. Not that yeah. Southwest would know anything about Canada. Um, but it, <laughs> there was a, an, a horrible deep freeze. Uh, it was negative uh, below freezing temperatures for days on end in, in some of the hubs. I think Chicago included in that, Ian. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did you get I mean, it, it was days, very cold and it was very cold. windy. But the, the, the precipitating event seemed to be 
centered in Denver, one of Southwest's large, don't call it a hub. Largest, hub. largest, uh, by largest, largest, largest yeah, not a hub. City. Yeah. Focus city. Sure. It's a hub. Yeah. Um, at some point, there were rumors that a hundred ground workers walked off. That was never confirmed. But at one point, we do know that they were really constrained on, on ground workers in, in Denver to the point where they actually had to divert flights away from Denver because there was just no one there to work the flights. From that point on, airplanes got out of position. Uh, flight attendants and pilots got out of position. Flights started canceling and it cascaded from Denver out to all the other hubs and then to all the other outstations. And then the whole thing just came crashing down. Um, so to your point, Matt Delaney, why are people upset? Worst blizzard of all time. Every other airline had the same blizzard. Uh, United has a, an actual hub in Denver and Chicago. Uh, Alaska in Seattle, they had snow and ice in Seattle. Um, but Alaska has almost entirely recovered. Um, it is not an excuse days later to blame a storm that hap that did impact their operations. But you, you can't just say, well, it was a bad storm. Yeah, but an airline the size of Southwest with their level of... of with the size of Southwest and their their background and their history and their operation prowess, this should not have been an insurmountable hurdle that they can't recover from. So yes, there was it's, a storm. It's the recovery from the storms that is the right. problem. Like every airline, they fully understandable the cancellations during the storm as a result. You know, but after a day yeah. after, I mean, you have to be able to. Recover so I've, from I've any, updated yeah. the I've updated the graphic um, from <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> from the beginning of when we started talking 31 minutes ago um it's uh we've canceled another uh about another 100 flights uh on on thursday so so to to ned's point to jason's point it's and it's not even us saying it it's the ceo of southwest airlines saying it last night they didn't have the infrastructure to recover from the same exact problems that every other airline experienced. They yeah. did not have the ability to know where their staff were. They did not have the ability to quickly reschedule and reset the airline like other airlines did. Yeah, and that's it's why is, I, I mean, it's not simple. No, but and it's that, simple that's why it. I particularly don't like in that, uh, that one PR push they did kept mentioning safety, safety, safety. And then Matt Delaney, you're mentioning is why they're the safest airline ever. This doesn't have anything to do with safety. Yes, they canceled flights when necessary, when weather dictated that they canceled the flights, but that doesn't stop them from ramping back up like every other airline did. Safety is a diversion from the actual problem, which was an, I would say, operational incompetence at this point. They just do not have the systems in place to reboot the airline. And again, this is not the first time we've seen this with Southwest or any other U.S. airline. This uh, John Ostrauer on the air current put together a, a debrief of what happened earlier this year where Southwest in the summer had a very similar but less awful, less, uh, what would you call it, <laughs> less widespread uh, system-wide failure. This is epic and a lot of people with a lot of years in this industry have said they have never seen anything quite this bad right I, I hope we never see it again and uh adam cartman you said why are intra-hawaii operations impacted well the planes can't get to hawaii they don't have any planes based in hawaii they got to get there from seattle yeah. or la or san diego i assume if the planes can't get out of the mainland they can't get to alaska uh, alaska well i guess do they have any planes to alaska it doesn't matter if they no. can't get to hawaii no. they can't run anything intra hawaii <laughs> and there's your answer right. fly hawaii yeah, Airlines. southwest like we said, it's just very different. Hawaiian has a dedicated intra-island fleet, whereas Southwest planes are coming from, yeah, Oakland to Honolulu, then flying the Kona leg and coming back. But and look yeah. at them. They're, they're running all these flights there out of go. Hawaii now because that's, I mean, on the scale of where you want to get stranded, Hawaii is not so bad. But um, <laughs> Well, I feel lead... for the people that, that are on a budget. I mean, the yeah, people uh, that probably exactly save what I was gonna say. Christmas vacation and then you I mean a couple more days in Hawaii sounds great except hotels probably it. cost a couple hundred dollars and food and everything it's yeah and and who knows that, if you're, well and yeah. and and that and that speaks to the communication that people were or were not getting from Southwest in the sense that you know this at some point like the weather okay weather's understandable 
that's fine. I get it. It's a day or two. It sucks. If, if my vacation's late, if I miss Christmas, these are all terrible things, but that I understand. Like you, you can't fly when the fuel, you know, can't be pumped into the wing. You can't fly when the winds, you know, it's 60 or mile an hour. It's unsafe for the ground crew in to cross the aircraft. Right. Like that, I, it sucks, but I get it. Days later, if I'm still stranded, I've got no communication from the airline. My, my bags are nowhere because I checked in for the flight and then it got canceled and I still haven't gotten my bags back. So I'm out of my bags. I'm sleeping in the airport for three days. Do I get money for that? Is the airline going to allow me to, um, you know, claim compensation for any of the things that I need to buy? If my bags are lost, if I've lost part of my, you know, if I've had to rebook We do need to talk about this more in depth uh, on what you should do in a situation like this or what your recourse are. But we have some breaking news now. Um, Congress is getting involved and and nobody uh nobody likes that. Uh, (laughs) Senator Markey and Blumenthal call for Southwest Airlines to compensate passengers for avoidable holiday cancellations. And I'll read their quote real quickly. Uh, Southwest Airlines is failing customers during the most important travel week of the year instead of a holiday, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to meet. But the company can start by fairly compensating passengers whose flights were canceled, including not only rebooked tickets, ticket refunds and hotel, meal, and transportation reimbursement, but significant monetary compensation for the disruption to their holiday plans. Southwest is planning to issue a $428 million dividend next year. The company can afford to do right by the consumers it has harmed. Southwest should focus on its customers stranded at airports and stuck on interminable hold. Southwest cannot avoid compensating passengers by claiming these flights were cancellations caused by recent weather storms, as Southwest executives have acknowledged. The mass cancellations yesterday were largely due to a failure of its own internal systems. As such, those cancellations should be categorized as controllable, and Southwest should compensate passengers accordingly. Um, To those points, John Walton has mentioned in our chat that if this was a European-based airline, based in the EU, the EU 261 claims for this outage would probably bankrupt Southwest. I don't know. Nobody has done that math. I don't know if we can do that math, but 10,000. I, I think, uh, yeah, it, we haven't done the, the EU 261 comp math, but I think Seth Miller did some back of the napkin math and I was just poking around at it. I mean, it, five days, um, mostly full flights times 4,000 flights a day. That's a few million passengers. That's a lot of money. Nobody nobody has done that math, but just know, um, and (laughs) this will lead into the what you should do in the circumstance. Um, So, consumer protection. Jason, did you? Jason, which which senators did you say this? What you said it was Blumenthal and and Markey. uh, And Markey, yeah. Yes. Uh, Okay. The senators from Massachusetts and Connecticut, Um, and this this leads into the consumer protections in the U.S. There basically aren't any for all intents and purposes. In Europe, there are very specific rules, regulations in place. If there's a controllable issue, the airline has to do everything what's in its power to get you to its destination, including booking you on another airline, whether or not they have an agreement, and you are due some um, pretty decent compensation, up to 600 euros per person in some cases. Uh, That might be per day, I don't know about that. But in the US, um, they're really, isn't anything you're you're not do anything except maybe a refund which is why the senators are saying they want this to be categorized as a controllable incident because in that case uh the airline does actually owe you a refund but i think they also have an an unconditional waiver at this point where if your flight's not operating or if you don't want to take it you can get a refund if you can get a hold of southwest which is not easy yeah and at this point though a lot of people are incurring expenses far beyond just the cost of their ticket. So a refund really does very little to make them whole about this. Um, I, I want to comment on what people can do. So if you have certain credit cards, and I'm not going to advertise credit cards here, but some offer travel insurance, and it, it works when you're you're delayed by a couple of days. And I had this experience this summer when I was flying Lufthansa in Europe, and I got stuck in Frankfurt for a couple of days. And I mean, it is a very nice perk, but to that end, it took me three months to get reimbursed for that. So, Which is better than never, because you went to that hotel yeah. knowing that you would likely get something back in return for that expense. Absolutely. But I understand that there are people that 
might not be able to wait three months to get reimbursed a couple thousand dollars. You know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's yeah. And this is the holidays. Places are expensive. Shoot. I was looking at hotels in New York this week and they're $400 a night. Like it's yeah. Um, there's it, it's we'll, we'll yeah. Speaking of compensation, it, even if Southwest does decide to compensate passengers for all of this, how quickly will that happen? It's going to be take a long time to get through millions, you know, a couple million passengers and what they're owed. And your expenses may also well exceed whatever your credit card or travel insurance or anything is going to reimburse right. you. Because right now yes. there are some airlines taking advantage of the situation. If you look at the the historic price graph for some flights that are heavily impacted by Southwest cancellations, the, the graph just kind of goes right off the screen. Um, we have seen anecdotally unconfirmed reports also that United is taking advantage of the situation by upgaging aircraft to Southwest hubs like Denver or Phoenix and, and running um, larger aircraft to try to get as many people out as they can. Um, if you can afford it, great, but I'm sure a lot of people can see the availability on other airlines, but just can't book it because who would want to pay $5,000 to go Denver to Phoenix or something like that? I, I'm not surprised that Scott Kirby is being opportunistic here and trying to move some people with some with his extra planes, but uh, that's another that's for another podcast. Yes, someone in the comments suggests triple sevens to Midway. I am, I am all for that. Let's do that. Hey, you, you That's could land. You could easily land a triple seven at Midway. It, it becomes, but then it becomes a permanent, a permanent fixture. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, if they can get a dream lifter out of whatever that tiny little airstrip was, they can get a triple seven. Uh, Colonel, right. is it Colonel Jabara Airport? I think in uh, was that Oklahoma City, near Oklahoma City, something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll 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 discuss that. We've discussed that one before, but we'll we'll discuss that again. Um, but moral of the story is you can land anything anywhere. Uh taking off's a whole nother problem. Yeah. Um but the, so so the long and the short of it to to not to not go on too much longer, um, because I I, I I fear that we'll get caught in a cycle of breaking news. Um, which as as regular listeners to the podcast will know that that's a danger for us. We like a to twenty four hour flight finished twenty four podcast like. network. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Uh, so so the long and the short of it was there was weather. There was really bad weather. Historically bad weather. Terribly, terribly bad weather. Across lots the of weather <laughs> across the country. Everybody's operations were demolished. Every single passenger carrier operating to the United States had major problems on Thursday, Friday into Saturday. The real, the real trouble here starts on Sunday on Christmas when a lot of the airlines were able to reset. Um, they didn't have the quiet Christmas that they normally have, but they they were able to, to mostly reset. And, and you, you can kind of see where, where Southwest almost gets there. You know, there, there's, there's that, that dip on, on fewer flights operating on, on Christmas, uh, on Sunday. But then Monday, you see this massive, massive spike in, in cancellations where, where you start seeing, you know, 68% of cancellations, 68% uh, of flights canceled. And then, you know, today we're almost at, I think we're over 70% at this point. And then you're seeing the airline say, okay, now we're going to reset. So Southwest problems went from everyone's got the same problems to a very particular Southwest specific problem because of their lack of investment in the specific IT infrastructure that allows airlines to know where their crews are and to reschedule flights that didn't operate as they should have. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know what can happen from here other than uh, obviously a lot of money needs to be poured into their IT systems and their back end and their phone lines and their they need to get their house in, in order. I don't know what the government can do to make that happen it's it's probably nothing other than they could be huffy and puffy about it um brian they could call them to a to hearing and grill them in the senate but you're right great I mean, that accomplishes nothing other than embarrassing yeah. them but yeah. brian cox in the comments says we should give recommendations on what passengers should do um at this point hang in there there's nothing really you can do other than look for a flight on another airline if there's availability if you can afford it um, but those are probably two unlikely outcomes at this point. You just have to, 
I, I got nothing. There's really nothing to tell you at this point other than you, you can't even call the airline because they're probably not going to pick up. Just keep going on their yeah. website and hope you can find availability on some other flight. Or as uh, Kyle suggests, walk. Probably not a, <laughs> uh, a good suggestion. For I mean, I was going to say, if you're, if, you're, if you're not that far from where you are, this is a good time to look at, you know, renting a car. And I know that's Amtrak. not for some people, but for a lot of people. Yeah, Amtrak, exactly. Yeah, it, it's this is this is a tough one because Southwest does not have agreements with other airlines to get you to where you need to be. If this was almost any other airline, it would be much less of an issue because Delta, United, American, to a degree, would be to a degree, there's up, still to a degree very little the, availability out there. But the slack that they could pick up. It would be possible, and, and I'm not saying that, that that that's a panacea that, that you know other airlines can completely take the uplift from from this scale of a meltdown. That's not what I'm saying, but I mean it feeds into the problem. the 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 fact that they don't it it's 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 a unique situation because of Southwest's unique model that they've created such a hole for themselves. Yeah, and there is that one thing. There's I no interline agreement. The IT infrastructure is poor. Um, there's a very specific route network that plays into why aircraft were such out of position. It, it's it's like any it's like any aviation accident. It's never just one thing. It's a cascading set of failures. Yeah, and there's one more thing I want to mention that um, yesterday for Southwest was a complete mess. Flights going out seven, eight, ten hours late, and they were just basically putting crews on whatever they could, getting them out. Today, it's, a, it's about the same number of cancellations, but it's much more organized. At least this morning, the flights that were going out were going out relatively on schedule, which is a major improvement from just utter chaos. Um, so we are starting to see an improvement, yeah. still the same number of cancellations, but as opposed to yesterday, if your flight for Southwest today, tomorrow, the day after still shows as on time or delayed or not canceled, I would feel good about that. Um, I wouldn't, you know, place any large wagers on that flight operating, but I, I would certainly feel better about it. Than Cautiously about optimistic. Yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Lots yeah. of caution. That, that 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 favorite message of airline executives during earnings calls to Wall Street. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. 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 Southwest has uh, some headwinds, you know, in the uh, next quarter. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. To, to pull. Uh, uh, pull I, I saw. I saw call. a question. I saw a question about uh, what people should do about lost luggage. Um, <laughs> lost luggage, <laughs> at, at this point, it, Gosh. it's a lost cause. <laughs> you I'm might get nothing you can do in the new year. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, I, I I don't mean to make light, but the, I, I wish, I so very much wish that I could be like, yeah, go go get your luggage, go pick it up. But at this point, I don't think the airline has gotten that far. Yeah, I, I can't imagine focused. their bag tracking system is all that robust compared to G again, given compared all of the other Delta, IT infrastructure. American, issues, yeah, yeah, at least the major US airlines, they scan all the bags. They theoretically know at least what airport they're in. Southwest, I'm not confident they have any clue where those bags are. So if yeah. you put an air tag in your bag and it's not lost, uh, have some confidence that maybe you'll at least know where it is. Um, but I, I wouldn't count on that bag being shuttled between a, any destinations in the near future. When I was on so, CNN so, earlier today, they, they were noting that at Midway, the baggage people were just piling bags up from the origin destination. So if you happen to be at Midway looking for your bag, apparently they're heaped up and just, you know, these are bags from Washington, these are bags from New York. Like just, but yeah. Can I, can I make one more point and one more point before we wrap this up? By all means. Uh, if you are flying Southwest and trying to get a flight, be nice. Be nice to the phone representatives. Be nice to the gate agents. Be nice to everyone because however bad your day is trying to get somewhere, their day is probably exponentially worse because they have to deal with that for an entire shift. They're probably even working forced overtime, I bet. Uh, it, it is not a great situation for them having to do this because they – there's nothing really they can do. And they have to explain that for yeah. eight hours to every single person that asks them. So just be nice. That's, that's the worst nice. position to be yeah. in, to, yeah. to be, to, to know how frustrated, you know, the customer is and stand there and, and, and tell them that you can't do anything. Not because you don't want to, 
Um, you can't. I mean, because like you said, they, they you zeroed know. out the inventory. There's literally nothing they can do. There's that they yeah. have made it so that the frontline staff can't do anything. That's probably the right thing to do, but that's not really what you want to tell passengers. Sorry, I can't help you. Come back in 2023, and maybe we'll get you home. Yeah. So I, I put the graph up just for one more one more quick check of, of cancellations. I, I didn't redo the graph, but but I put it back up uh, as opposed to uh, what. 10 minutes ago, when I redid the graph at 1,894 cancellations on Thursday, we are now at 1,934. Uh, so, so still climbing. Um, Southwest is, is working its way through through the backlog of cancellations. Like we said, their, their goal is generally to operate about a third of their normal schedule over the next three days to help reset the airline, get everything shifted back to, to where... Um, where they they want to be and where they need to be so that they can they can move forward you can't buy a ticket on southwest if you don't already have a seat until the first of january so hopefully by then uh things have reset themselves uh the airline has has begun to to heal uh its its root network and then we can have a very interesting conversation in the new year on a regular episode of the podcast hopefully about what Southwest has announced it is doing to fix all of these problems. Uh, I want to say thank you, a big thank you to, to Ned Russell who, who joined us on his day off on his week off, I guess. Um, He's to, not even supposed uh, to be here to help. Tell us, have, have uh, you're discussion. not supposed to be here either, Jason. Yeah, Ned. Ned is the uh, Ned is the the airline editor at Airline Weekly, uh, over at Skift, and everyone knows Jason, who we're not really sure what he does, but he seems to hang out, uh, mm -hmm. so we keep him around. I'm here with and... you. <laughs> I am Ian Pechnik uh, from, from Flight Radar 24. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I really appreciate uh, everyone joining us for a special live video episode of AvTalk. And um, hopefully nothing else happens the rest of the week that we need to come back and do this again. But if we do, we'll be here. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening, watching. And uh, we'll have a, a version of this without the video, uh, if you can't stand looking at us, we'll have a version of this on the regular podcast feed uh, coming up shortly. Uh, so you'll be able to go back there and we'll have this as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments uh, below and we'll uh, we'll have a cycle through those and answer uh, the, the ones that we're able to. So if you are flying Southwest, good luck. If you're at home, good job. And uh, thank you everyone. We'll see you soon.